Hey there crafty friends, my name is Misty and welcome to Gleespin Designs. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you are new here, let me know down in the comments. I would love to say hi and if you've been here before, welcome back. For today's video, I have some gorgeous high-end Dollar Tree DIYs that you definitely don't want to miss. And I want to send out a huge, huge thank you to Avcultures for sponsoring today's video. We will talk more about them a little bit later on, so let's get crafting. For this DIY, I'm using three of the light bulb terrariums that I recently found at my local Dollar Tree. These are a really nice size. They are about eight inches long, and they do have a really nice size hole in the center so that you can put your cute little decor or succulents inside. And the tops do screw off very easily so that you can remove the twine hanger. So as you can see, these light bulbs do stand up already on their own, but I wanted to elevate them a little bit more and also give them a little bit of an extra detail. So I'm using these wood rings from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree does now have two different sizes in these wood rings. This is the larger size, which has five in the pack. And then they also have the smaller size, which has six in a pack. The larger size that I have here fits perfect on the bottom of the light bulbs. So I just add a little bit of hot glue and hot glue it right to the bottom of the light bulb terrarium. For each of the terrariums, I wanted them to be different. So I take the second one and I add some hot glue onto one of the wood rings. And then I just kind of place the light bulb on there a little bit crooked so that it is now kind of, I guess at an angle and not going straight up and down. And for the third bulb, I just take three of those wood rings and I just kind of sandwich them together by hot gluing them. Then I add some hot glue onto the top ring and place it right to the bottom of the light bulb terrarium. So this one stands up a little bit higher than all of the rest. Dollar Tree has many different options on what you could put inside your light bulbs. I found these really pretty different colored pebbles. I love the black, the teal, and this kind of brightish green. So all I do is just simply cut the bags over Open. you guys know this it's total common sense and I pour a little bit inside of each one of the light bulbs now you could add more or less if you would like obviously you can't add too much or it will spill out the front but you can definitely go off of that by how much to add now when it comes to the fairy lights, I get my fairy lights off of Amazon. I really like these really small battery packs and you get 32 of them for only $26.39 or you can buy a bigger pack of 50 for $32.99. They are waterproof and you can get them in different colors as well. These fairy lights are 10 feet long with 30 LEDs, so I did have to kind of wrap the wire around the battery pack a little bit just to shorten it. And then I take the battery pack and kind of just hide it underneath the pebbles, just enough to where you can't see it, but I just need to move maybe one or two pebbles so that I can turn the lights on and off. Then I just add some Dollar Tree succulents before I push the wire lights all the way in. And I was going to leave this the original color, but I feel like I just like the white cleaner look better. If you do leave it unpainted, I feel like it has more of a boho feel to it, but I really enjoyed these and I did do the last minute painting, but I love how they turned out. And if you guys would like to check out the fairy lights, I will have a link down below in the description box so you can go and check them out. Like I had mentioned earlier, today's video is sponsored by Avcultures. Avcultures is the most trusted metal sign brand in the U.S. And as a matter of fact, they are located right here in my hometown of Ohio. They make the most stunning metal wall decor signs, both for indoors and outdoors. Avcultures has ready-made signs and customizable signs. You can even send in your own picture to be turned into a stunning sign as well. 
I was just absolutely amazed by how gorgeous these are. Look at that flower. I'm obsessed. And they also have so many different themes that you can choose from with sales up to 70% off. And I also have a coupon code for you guys for 15% off. So at checkout, just type in Misty15. And if you guys have been watching my channel for any amount of time, then you probably know that I love farmhouse decor. Don't worry if you don't like farmhouse. Trust me, they have something for everyone even the kiddos. However, when I found this farmhouse sign, I absolutely fell in love. So all I did was pick the size and the color that I wanted, and they have several different sizes you can choose from. Then I just typed in what I would like my text to say, checked out, and you guys look how gorgeous this sign is. I love that it is weatherproof so I can hang it outside if I would like to. There, it's just amazing quality and I love it so much. So I definitely highly recommend that you go check them out. I will leave a link down below in the description box to their website and don't forget about your coupon code for the extra 15% off and thank you again Avcultures for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to crafting. For this DIY, I found this orange plastic bucket at Dollar Tree and I really like how it really reminds me of a wicker look on the outside. So that's kind of where I'm going to go with this project. Wicker really kind of reminds me of my grandmother so it has like a little special spot in my heart. So all I did was use some white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and add a little bit of baking soda. Honestly, there really isn't any measurement here. You just kind of go off how thick you would like it. And you guys, look at that coverage. I mean, it's amazing. I love using this paint technique. It just really, you only usually have to do like one or two coats instead of like with normal paint, you have to do several coats. So I just absolutely love this technique. I do also recommend using a bristled paintbrush just so it gets down into the creases a little bit better. And all I did was go ahead and paint the entire bucket with the baking soda and white Rust-Oleum chalk paint mixture. Once I had the bucket fully painted, I set it off to the side to dry and then I started to prep the legs. And for the legs, you can see I'm using some Dollar Tree plungers. You guys, you should have seen the way the cashier looked at me when I when I came up with five plungers because I got a couple just in case I did mess up. So yeah, it, it was insane. Even the people that were in line were like, what is this chick doing? So all you have to do is really just unscrew the plunger part off of the wood handle. And then to remove the sticker goo, because usually they always do end up leaving sticker residue, I use Goo Gone, which you can get from Dollar Tree. And it also kind of is its like own little stain in a way. I love this natural wood color that it really brings out. And then I used my miter saw to cut down the legs to 11 inches. And then I used a pencil to just mark five inch spaces where I made a triangle. And that's where I'm going to use my hot knife. And then I cut out a circle. And here I was like, oh, I'm just going to eyeball it. And then... The second one, I got a little bit smarter. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to trace the actual leg. And that worked absolutely perfect. I just traced the leg out with my pencil. And then I knew the size that I actually needed. Then I went back in with my hot knife and cut those two circles out. If you do not have a hot knife, you could just use a normal knife and heat it up, but I will leave a link down below in the description box to the hot knife that I'm using here. And then I just used some white Rust-Oleum chalk paint to cover up the orange from where the plastic melted. Once that paint was dry, I grabbed the wood pieces and I made a little bit of a mark where about an inch and a half down, just so that when I placed them down into the bucket, I knew how far to push them and they would all be the same length. For the legs, I did not want them to be straight up and down. I did want them to be kind of angled a little bit. So I set them at a little bit of an angle. And once I had them where I liked them, I used my hot glue gun and I'm using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. And I add a decent amount of hot glue going around that little wood piece that's peeking into the bucket. And I do that on all three of those wood pieces. Dollar Tree has this really pretty jute twine and I believe it's like a cotton twine mix and they do have it in several colors. I love this tan color and all I did was add a little bit of hot glue up here at the top of the handle and then I attached the jute twine to that and it started 
wrapping it through the handle and then I just wrapped it until that part was completely covered and I did that on both sides on the handles. Now this standing bucket could be perfect for so many different things. You could add a little throw blanket inside of it, you could put your toiletries inside of it, or you could also add some plants to make it more of like a planter. And I do a little bit of a trick where if I don't have enough of the picks that I need, like say once I put them in a bouquet, the bouquet is not big enough and I need it to be a little bit wider and take up more space. So all I do is just start kind of bending the branches outwards on all of the picks that I do have. And then I start taking them and placing them back together into like that bouquet. And it is just so much fuller and really like so much wider and takes up so much more space. So then all I did was place my plants right inside of the bucket and that was it. This DIY is done. One thing I do like about having this as a planter is you can change out the plants or the florals for each season or holiday. And I recently found these at Dollar Tree. Yes, the fall stuff is coming out and look how gorgeous these look as well. And like I had mentioned, you could also use it to put a little blanket inside of it also. For this DIY, I'm using one of the Dollar Tree pool noodles and you could use whatever color you would like. The color does not matter. So all I do is take a box knife and I make a long slit going all the way down one side of the pool noodle and then I turn it over and do another one on the other side so that I can split the pool noodle in half and I have two equal parts. I don't know if you guys have seen these crazy trending bubble vases yet but the prices are absolutely insane. $70? No way. So I figured I would make my own. I found this Dollar Tree bucket a while back and it did was it well it was galvanized and just looked all galvanized and had the letter H on it, but I did paint it for a different project. So all I'm going to do is use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks again, and I use my low temp heat setting on my glue gun, and I add the hot glue onto the pool noodle. Then I just start wrapping the pool noodle around the galvanized tin, as I am adding hot glue and I just keep adding more hot glue and wrapping as I go and then once I get all the way around to the back I use my box cutter to just kind of cut the excess away and then glue that down as well. I do want to mention that you do not have to paint your bucket. You can leave it its normal color because you really will not see any of that anyways because you're wrapping it in pool noodle and we are also going to paint it. For the most part, when you're wrapping the pool noodle, it fits together perfectly, but if you would like to have it like super perfect, you can cut off little pieces with a box cutter or a knife and then just add some more hot glue and make sure that those ends also adhere together when you're gluing it down. I usually use like a little piece of tape and kind of place it on one end and then pull it over and place it on the other side and that will kind of hold it in place until the glue dries. Then I take another piece of the pool noodle and I do the exact same thing, gluing it down to the tin, but I do recommend when you glue it down, make sure that your starting and ending point is at the same spot as you did the previous pool noodle. See how like my, well there, now you can see it, my ends are basically at the same spot on the tin. For the third ring, I do it a little bit different than I did the previous two rings. I only add a hot glue onto one side of the pool noodle and then I place it onto the tin bucket and again where my starting point was on the rest of the pool noodle pieces is where I started this ring as well. And then I just went ahead and added a bunch of hot glue onto the tin itself and then started twisting the pool noodle around until it was formed into a circle. 
And then just like with the previous two, add a nice amount of hot glue so that those pool noodles really adhere together. And then take a piece of tape so that you can keep those pool noodles together until the glue dries. Look how cool this is turning out. I really actually am enjoying this style and this DIY so much. And now I'm just taking that Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white and a little bit of baking soda and I give this a nice full coat completely covering the entire bubble vase. You do not have to paint the entire inside of the vase but I do recommend just at least painting the pool noodle that you can see. Now I want my base to have some really nice texture to it so I'm adding some of the sand from Dollar Tree and it does not matter what color sand you use, the paint will just go ahead and cover that right up and it will be whatever color your paint is. So I add as much as I would like, again it is just personal preference on how thick and how much texture I guess that you would like. Now all you have to do is start painting that right onto the vase and you just really just slap it on there and then kind of spread it around. That's kind of the easiest way I found to do it. And you guys, this is really so much fun and actually kind of satisfying to do. And all you again have to do is cover the vase and you guys, I am obsessed with how this turned out. So I also got some greeneries from Dollar Tree. These are absolutely gorgeous, these artificial ferns. I love them so much. And I just wanted to show you guys that I like to kind of take my plants or picks and I will mix them up. This is a pick that I got off from Walmart and it is just a dogwood bush and it was a little bit over $3 so you definitely can't beat that. And again, just like with my other picks, I like to kind of take the branches and spread them out just so that they kind of take up a little bit more space and are a lot fuller in my eyes at least. And then again, you just put those all together, place them inside of your vase. I'm obsessed, like literally obsessed. These are so expensive online and we made ours for $2.50. Like that is so gorgeous and it goes with all of our other DIYs. For this DIY, I'm using some of the bamboo rings from Dollar Tree and they do come two in a pack with a larger one and a smaller one. I'm actually going to use three packs of these and I start off by separating the size, the smaller ones and the larger ones. And then I only grab two of the larger ones for now. I set the third one off to the side and I'm going to use some wood glue and go all the way around the top of one of the rings. And you can get wood glue at Dollar Tree as well. And then I just take the second ring and place it right on top. Then I take two of the smaller rings and I do the exact same thing, adding some hot glue going all the way around the ring and then gluing those two rings together. So again, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I love these bamboo sticks. I use them all the time in my videos, in almost every one of my videos. They come in handy so much, and I always have a link down below in the description box for these as well. So all I'm going to do is take one of the bamboo sticks, and I'm going to add a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue, and hot glue it, well, glue it right to the inside of the ring. I did use one of the little Dollar Tree clips just to hold it in place, but I did find that you definitely don't need to do that, so I didn't do that with the rest of them. So all I did was take the bamboo sticks and I glued them north, south, east, and west onto the bamboo ring. Once I had those four bamboo sticks in place, I took the other four and I just started gluing them right in between those original four bamboo sticks. Oh my gosh, you guys, I feel like I'm going to say bamboo sticks a hundred times. So anyways, after you take your sticks and you glue them in between the original four, you will have eight total. 
Once all the sticks are in place, I'm going to take the third bamboo ring and I just kind of slide it over top of all of those bamboo sticks. And I do kind of stop right at the top of the sticks and then I take some of those Dollar Tree clips and kind of just clip them in place so that it holds it all together. Then I just take my hot glue gun and I kind of pull the bamboo stick away from the ring, add some hot glue onto either the ring or the bamboo stick, and then I glue those two together. Then I just repeated the same step to all of the other bamboo sticks, hot gluing them right to that top ring so that we have this really neat looking lantern. And here's how the lantern should look so far. We do still need to put the bottom on it, but this is how it should definitely look at this point. Now for the smaller lantern, I'm going to do the pretty much the same exact steps, but I do cut down the bamboo sticks to 11 inches and they were previously 15 inches. I am sorry I did not mention that earlier, but then I use my Dollar Tree garden shears to cut them down. They cut super easy with those Dollar Tree garden shears. And then I did the exact same thing, doing the north, south, east, west, and then gluing the bamboo sticks in between those as well until I had eight going all the way around. And then I take that third smaller ring from Dollar Tree and I place it right on top like I did the first lantern. And again, just going around up here at the top, pushing those bamboo sticks out a little bit, adding some hot glue, and then gluing them to that bamboo ring. And once you have that done, your little lantern should look like this at this point. Now for the bottoms of the lanterns, you could very easily trace out the circle on some Dollar Tree foam board and you could save $1.25 instead of buying two separate items like I did, but I wanted my items to, well my, uh, my bottoms, to be wood just like the rest of the lantern. So all I did was go ahead and use this wood sign from Dollar Tree and I tried using my Cricut weeding tool at first, but I did forget to heat this up, you guys. So if you use a heat gun or even a blow dryer, it will loosen up the glue and then you can use like a Cricut scraping tool and it will most likely come off all in one piece. I then take a piece of sandpaper and sand it down so that it is all nice and smooth. Since we do not need the twine hanger, I went ahead and cut it off and then filled in the hole with some Dollar Tree spackling. And now that the bottom to our larger lantern is prepped, we're going to move on to the bottom to the smaller lantern. I'm using this wood round that I got from Walmart for under a dollar and I'm just going to paint it white with my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. And I also paint the larger bottom the same color as well as both of the lanterns. Once everything was painted and all dry, I started out with the larger lantern and I added some wood glue going all the way around the bottom and I added a little bit of hot glue for an immediate hold as well and then I just placed it right in the center of that white wood round. Once the larger lantern was done, I did the exact same steps with the smaller lantern, adding some wood glue and hot glue and then placing it right in the center of that wood round that I got from Walmart. At this point, you could leave your lanterns just as is, but Dollar Tree has came out with so many new greenery garlands that I am literally obsessed with them. And they have them in so many different colors of green, well, shades of green, and so many different styles of leaves as well. So what I'm going to do with the garland that I choose, you can do with any of these or any other garland that you may have. This one here is my absolute favorite. I almost used this one but I really really like this vine garland that has ivory on it. I think it is just so pretty and really high-end looking. This vine is also from Dollar Tree as well so you really do have so many different options if you would like to take this route as well. I cut off a small piece up here at the top just because I wanted a leaf a little bit closer to the top and it did have quite a bit of space without any leaves so I did have to hot glue those back together and all I did was kind of hook it around the top bamboo ring. These garlands are wired, so I think that is pretty neat. Um, and when I say these garlands, I mean the ivory vine garlands. The other garlands that I showed you from Dollar Tree are not wired, but all I did was just kind of attach it up at the top and then I spiraled it down one of those bamboo sticks. 
and I did cut off a little bit of the excess down at the bottom just because I didn't want so much down inside the lantern. With the larger one, I did not have to cut any off. I was able to just wrap it around the bottom of the lantern like I'm doing here, and it actually fit perfect. And then all I do is add a little bit of hot glue to kind of keep that in place. Now it will stay in place if you don't want to add the hot glue so that maybe you can change the florals or the greenery or the garland whatever out. So you can definitely leave that up to you. That is personal preference whether you want to kind of glue these garlands down so that they stay in place. And once you have that done, this is how it should look and I am in love. I think they are so gorgeous. For this DIY, I'm using two of these longer wood looking signs from Dollar Tree. I've seen them with different shapes as well up at the top so it does not have to be a seahorse because we will be cutting that off. So I just grabbed a piece of wood and used my pencil to make a line as close as I possibly could get to the seahorse because I want as much of the other piece of sign as I can possibly get. And then I use my box knife to score it a few times. And after you've scored it a few times, you can just kind of bend it back and forth and it will kind of snap right off. And if you have any little excess pieces, you can just take your knife and kind of just cut those right off as well. I did the same exact steps on the second sign to remove the seahorse and then I took a piece of sandpaper and just sanded both of those edges down so that they were nice and smooth. To make this a long vertical sign, I'm going to place these two signs together and then I'm going to use these jumbo craft sticks that I got from Walmart and I use some E6000 and hot glue so that they have a really strong permanent hold and I place a decent amount of both of the glues onto the jumbo craft sticks and I just start placing them onto the back of the sign and I do kind of add quite a few of them so that it really is nice and strong and sturdy. Once you have the two signs nice and secured, you can flip it around to the front and you will notice there is a little bit of a gap in the center where you added the two signs together. So all I do is take some Dollar Tree spackling and I fill in that gap so that it is nice and smooth. All you have to do is sand it down and it will look like one long cohesive piece. I want this sign to kind of have a weathered shiplap look to it, so I'm just going to take my chippy brush and this is just a bristled paintbrush where the bristles are not all the same length. I know some people do not know what a chippy brush is, I didn't for a long time, so I figured I might, I probably should explain that, so just in case somebody out there doesn't know. So what I do is, you've probably seen me do this on my channel before, I turn the brush to the side and then I dip it into the paint, not like saturating the brush, but just a little bit, you know, onto the paintbrush and then I just make strokes going down, like all the way down whatever sign or painting that I'm painting this shiplap look on. I bought this really nice home stencil from Hobby Lobby for $5.99 and I just place it down onto the sign where I would like it to be, mainly the H and the greenery up at the top. And then I use some painter's tape to just kind of keep that stencil in place. And then I use a Dollar Tree stencil brush, one of the foam stencil brushes, and my black chalk paint. And I just stencil in the greenery piece up at the top as well as the H. 
Once I had that greenery piece and the H filled in completely, I removed the stencil and I was actually really surprised how crisp and amazing this turned out. So after I did those two, I went ahead and placed on the second piece of the stencil and then I filled that in as well with the black chalk paint using the stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I don't know what is going on, but I just cannot talk right today. I'm so sorry, you guys. I know I'm doing a horrible job at explaining this, but thank God you can see what I'm doing because, yeah, I just cannot talk right today. But anyways, back to the craft. Once you have those three filled in, remove the stencil and look how amazing that turned out. Next, you'll need one of these buckets from the Dollar Tree. I have never seen this gorgeous teal color before ever in any of the Dollar Tree buckets that are metal and I love this color and they also have this beautiful yellow and also kind of like this powdery pink so pretty but this teal is definitely one of my favorite colors so that is the one that I went with on the inside side of these buckets there is a welded line and what I did was I used that as kind of like my starting point and I took my pencil and went straight across and then straight up so that that was my guide to cut the bucket in half. And then I just used a pair of normal scissors to kind of just start cutting it. And I found it easiest to cut down one side and then cut down the other and then go down and put your scissors in at the bottom and then cut across at the bottom. And if any parts do give you any problems, you can use some garden shears or just really any kind of strong scissors will do. Now that the bucket is cut in half, we can go ahead and start trying to attach it to our sign. And I use some of the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks and I'm going to add some E6000 and hot glue. And then I'm going to turn the sign around so that I can easily place them down inside the bucket. But I'm only going to glue this to the sign. I'm not gluing the Jenga block to the bucket at all. I'm actually not gluing the bucket down right now at all. I'm just placing the Jenga blocks up against the side of the bucket, but gluing it down to the sign. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more of a space for me to glue the bucket to so that it definitely has more of a stronger hold and does not fall off. So as you can see, once I remove the bucket, you now have these two Jenga blocks here and I add some glue onto both sides of the Jenga block and then I place the bucket back down and then I push the sides of the bucket onto the sides of the Jenga block. And then I use one more Jenga block down at the bottom and this one I do glue to the bucket and as well to the sign. Now all you have to do is add your flowers. I hope that didn't sound too complicated, but here is how this DIY turned out. I also want to send out a huge thank you to Kim and Mary Conrath for the coffees. You guys are absolutely amazing and I appreciate it so very much and it definitely helps keep my YouTube channel running. As always, I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. And if this content is something that you like to watch, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to be notified when I post new uploads, hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell notification to all. And YouTube should notify you when I post new uploads. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!